I knew Lance for only a brief time in my life. He was athletic, a good student, and someone who cared about others. So when he went missing, it was felt by most of the community. Shortly after his disappearance, a discovery was made. A journal, leather bound and within were months and months of entries that were written by Lance himself. Without explaining the how or why of it, I did manage to get my hands on his journal. I had a particular interest in it, not because I was interested in Lance or that I desired to gain insight into his private life, no. I simply wished to experience the moments that led up to his untimely exodus from this plane of existence or whatever may have happened to him. As I stated, the journal had many entries that were more or less mundane. However, the last few pages were filled top to bottom with a hastily written account by who I can only assume was Lance. I'm not one who often seeks out curious tales such as this, but this one had me captivated from the very first line. It read, I decided to go for a jog tonight. My upstairs bedroom was getting a little too stuffy for my sinuses to handle, and I greatly yearned for the cool night air outside my window. So I threw on an old gray sweatshirt and my comfiest running pants before setting off into the night. Just as I saw it, the air was brisk and welcoming, and my nasal passages cleared right up almost the moment I set foot outside. Oddly enough, there weren't many people out and about on the school, yet subtly warm Thursday evening. My neighborhood was built around Chanley Woods, which was a popular place for folks to gather even at later hours like this. Although, it was only around 9 so it really wasn't that late. As I continued to jog, I turned the corner of Garrican Drive and made my way unrestricted down the sidewalk of Fayardi Avenue. I noticed that most of the lights of the home surrounding me were off, and a slight shudder worked its way down my body. I've jogged this route numerous times and had never felt this sensation nor had I ever witnessed something so anomalous as an entire street's worth of homes without a single light on. Nevertheless, I pressed on. I would jog until I reached the entrance through Chandler Woods, which would wind its way back to Carrigan Drive. It was a nice little path that one such as I should be able to navigate, even without something like the light of the moon to guide my way. However, as I jogged further, something caught the corner of my eye. I turned my head to look across the street, and in an opposing yard was what seemed to be a figure. Obviously, my heart began to race differently. Not the same as the pounding of its rate racing due to my running. I was petrified, but only until my mind rationalized that what I was seeing was probably a cheap Halloween animatronic that the homeowners liked to put out to deter thieves. For a moment, I thought I saw it twitch, but I disregarded it as the moon playing tricks on my mind. After staring for a bit too long, I decided to return to my course and see it through. As I turned my head back to face in front of me, I felt a slight gust of wind brush against my cheeks. It was the only sound I heard the whole night aside from the sound of my footsteps against the concrete, but something about it prompted me to turn around. When I did, I quickly noticed that the animatronic or figure or whatever it was in the yard previously across from me was gone. Terror gripped my heart and I had just begun taking my few new steps away from the strange occurrence when I heard it. A second set of footsteps. I turned completely around, fully prepared to fight the potential threat closing in on my position. But nothing could have prepared me for the sight I was now beholden to. For there, in my vision, on the same sidewalk as me, was the thing, perhaps 30 feet from me. It swayed lightly in the breeze that now seemed to be picking up quite intensely, and its body produced an odd sound that I can only describe 
as the noise you hear when bones rub against cloth. Clouds began blanketing the sky, and thus the moon was obscured, and this thing's face along with it. I backed away from it, instinctively of course, because why would I want to be anywhere near something so sinister? Unless it was someone playing a trick on me? Hey, you there. You're not funny, I called out. But the thing did not respond. Well, fine, I said with a light fear in my voice. Enjoy your stupid prank. I'm going to finish my jog. Once again, this thing or person did not respond. So I turned my back to it. But as I did, I heard quickened footsteps like someone was rushing up to me with great speed and furious intent. I spun around again, sweating and was nearly paralyzed when my eyes once again saw the thing. Only this time, it was much closer. Its head was at a strange angle, like it was tilting it in confusion, and its clothing was torn and tattered. The moonlight was still rather absent, but there were street lamps, and luckily, one was between me and it. I was fed up with this cat and mouse game already, so again, called out to whoever it was. Listen, I'm not in the mood tonight. Go find someone else to bother. I really need to be getting home. But the thing, just like before, did not respond. Now I was getting angry. I saw, down to my left, a stone in the grass and I pick it up. It only took three seconds at the most, but when I looked up, the thing was closer. What the fuck are you? I questioned intensely. A fucking weeping angel? I had heard that They had a propensity for moving when one wasn't looking, but like before and every other time, the thing did not respond. With my blood now boiling with a malicious disdain from this thing that had ruined my jaunt, I gripped the stone and tossed it in its direction. I didn't expect to hit it, as I wasn't the best aim, but I did. I hit it right in the head. The thing showed no change in its stance almost as if my stone had done nothing. But that fact left me deeply frightened. I couldn't delay and mess around with whatever this was any longer. I needed to just run until I got home, lock the door, and spend the rest of the night inside. Don't you dare follow me any longer, or I'll call the police. You hear me? I threatened it, be the only thing I could think of. And like I expected, it said nothing in return. In my mind, I had made my point, and if this thing or person decided to mess with me any further, then the consequences were on them. And so, I turned around, but this time, I sprinted. I ran so fast that my calves nearly buckled out from under me. It was a grueling quarter mile to the entrance of Chanley Woods, and the quick expenditure of energy left me with a need for rest. But as I stood there, facing the start of the trail, winding through the woods, I heard it again. This time, however... It was different. What I first thought was the sound of someone throwing stones nearby swiftly transitioned into the sudden realization that what I was hearing was skipping. An awkward light-footed sound that I imagined would be what a skeleton would sound like if it could run without crumbling into a pile of bones. Fear got the better of me and I turned once again to see the thing in the distance but closing fast. Maybe who or whatever it was didn't see me staring because at first, I didn't think it would stop, but then it did. On the crest of the sidewalk, a ways back whence I came. That's it. I'm calling the police, I shouted as I began fumbling for my phone in my pocket. And as I did, the thing began to advance unnaturally fast, taking long skipping strides but resembling a scarecrow-like nature. I say that because its head was bouncing around like it had nothing to support it. I was stricken with fear and I didn't know what to do. My body, however, found a way to will itself through the prospect of being descended upon because I slowly began to back up into the woods. I nearly tripped and fell as my ankle bumped against a large root that was growing out of the ground. But all I could think about was how fast this thing was gaining on me, and although I couldn't see for shit, I thought it would be my only option to just hightail it through the trail the best I could, hoping my head wouldn't smack some low-hanging branch and send me straight to my doom. 
The thing had nearly reached me now, but when it got within the 30 foot distance, it stopped on a dime. Chills erupted from my core as I turned away from it once more in an effort to finally escape my pursuer. By the grace of something, I managed to make it through the trail without much issue and came out alive on Carrigan Drive. As I listened for the sounds of awkward running, I heard leaves rustling and twigs snapping under what I could only assume was the thing making its own horrid way through Chandley Woods. Without further hesitation, I used the last of my strength to book it down the sidewalk back to my home before turning to close and lock the door immediately. And then, I waited. I watched outside the window of the living room and waited. Nothing. Not a shadow, nor a sound. I figured I was in the clear like I had evaded death itself by merely outpacing it. They do say it's always over your shoulder. Perhaps this was the literal manifestation? I thought these reassuring things to comfort myself as the events of the night had shaken me greatly. But I would not find reprieve in my room because when I took one more cursory glance out of my window to the front yard below, there it was. It was standing in my front yard, swaying. This time, however, it was saying something. I couldn't hear what it was, but that was only until it began walking toward my front porch. Its sluggish movements reminded me of the living dead as it shambled its way to my front door. I was growing increasingly panicked by the second and when I reached back into my pocket to call the police, I found that my phone was completely not functioning. Now, I could hear what it was saying as it pounded on my front door. Something like, at dusk I stalk. At midnight, I hunt, and at dawn, the rest I either wasn't able to catch or it didn't finish, but its voice sounded like a thousand drowning people all at once, and that scared me even more. I just heard glass shatter below. I think it's in my house now. It keeps repeating that same phrase. At dusk, I stalk. At midnight, I hunt, and at dawn, still left uncompleted. I can hear now that it isn't finishing its sentence. I decided I didn't care to know and began piling things against my door like a barricade. Then all the lights went out in my room and nothing was working. Devastating paranoia filled my bones and raised my skin. I'd sooner die from a heart attack than whatever this thing was. Its footsteps are coming up the stairs now. The... the door. I don't know what it's doing, but it's speaking again. It finished its mantra. At dusk, I stalk. At midnight, I hunt. And at dawn, I kill. The last part of the journal was more or less scribbles. Lance was probably trying to write it out as fast as possible before whatever it was got to him. It really sounded like a harrowing experience. But before you ask yourself, who exactly are you and how exactly did you manage to get your hands on this journal, you must remember and consider this. I never told you my name. I only told you that I knew Lance for a brief time in my life. What I didn't tell you is that it was during a cool yet subtly warm Thursday evening.